Wait, 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 wait. We have a um, participant coming from for phone. I'm not sure who he is, but I, he's not muted. So we are. Welcome, uh, mysterious phone man. <laughs> or, or woman. <laughs> I don't know. You are an icon to me. Um, <laughs> Cool. Okay, so let's let's get this going. Um, what are we doing? We are doing the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It's November the twelfth. It's Monday. It's that time again. Uh, may I please have a volunteer for a note taker? Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> Default. Thank you again and always. Um, uh, okay. Cool. So. Uh, if you haven't already, please put your name on the attendees list. Uh, the I put the link to the crit pad on the uh, in the chat, so come and add your weekly update if you haven't already. Uh, and now we will start by going through the everyone's updates for the week. Uh, should we start with Jacob? So uh, I spent most of last week getting uh, Speedy to work again in Node. Um, so that is working in all the LTS versions of Node now. Um, it's still not working on stable, but that should hopefully be coming sometime in the near future. Um, also submitted some stuff working on some stability improvements for the libp2b 0.24 release. Uh, that is really, really close, so you should see that. Um, I'm just doing some long-term JSIPFS daemon testing. Um, to make sure everything's good to go before we release that. So got a few PRs to fix a few miscellaneous things. Um, also have a PR out for libpdb to switch so we don't dial ourselves because um, there's an issue where if you have the same local address and port, uh, you could totally dial yourself by accident because it thinks it's not you because it has a different PR ID. Um, so that should be fixed and we'll probably roll that into the 0.24 release. Um, blocked on a couple of items. Um, one, it's not critical, um, but the peer ID crypto keys, like that's been sitting there for a while um, and it's good to go. That's just blocking me on finishing that OKR. Um, and then once that's done, I'll add a uh, update to JSIPFS showing people how they can change their key types. Um, and then also a maintainer. I need maintainer permissions for interface stream muxer um, so I can get that pushed out and we can do some um, doc updates for the libpdb 24 release. And then this week I'll be starting on the libpdb daemon work that's needed for the testbed updates and getting 0.24 out the door. Any questions? I would like to know about uh, the uh, not dialing yourself solution, but I will take that offline. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, who's next? Uh, Aiken Brain. Uh, Alex, would you like to give us your update, please? Uh, yep. So I was out Monday uh, in the rest of the week. Uh, I've been working on the removal of the CID and multi hash properties from the DAG node class. Um, there's a comment on an IPLD issue where I say, oh, I'll give it a go tomorrow. Like, how bad could it be? Really bad. Really, really bad. It turns out it breaks loads of stuff. Um, so I've basically been going through hundreds of repos and opening, it feels like hundreds of repos, and opening PRs on them to remove reliance on the multi hash property uh, and the CID property. And that's, they're all kind of in place now. And it's just a case of just getting them, you know, knocking them down like a row of dominoes. Uh, so, it's in MFS, it's in uh, Unix FS, it's in DAGPV, it's in IPLD, um, it's in interface IPFS core. The next one is uh, JS IPFS API, and then it can go into IPFS DCTL, and then it can go into JS IPFS, and then we will break all of the user land programs that are relying on it. Cool. <laughs> um, I had a, a momentary wobble about something on the, uh, so change the, the multi-hash property of DAG links to be called CID uh, because they're not multi-hashes, they're CIDs. And I think it's really important that we normalize the language that we're using and we stop using these terms that, that are wrong because we know what they mean, but then you talk to someone and they're like, oh, I thought you meant multi-hash. What's a, what's a multi-hash? What's a CID? And people just get really confused. Um, but it is quite disruptive and I had a little wobble and I opened a DAG PV PR to put it back, but I'm saying don't merge it. Just I'm a coward. 
I mean, we shouldn't merge it, but if we do need to merge it, it's there. Um, so that should be fine. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to finish pushing all that stuff through uh, this week and then try and tackle some other OKR stuff like splitting out uh, Unix FS engine into a bunch of separate modules. That'd be really nice. That's me. Any questions? For the people at home, could you maybe explain why this is beneficial to the JS IPFS code base? Yeah, so for um, certain use cases like reading in an enormous directory of files, anything that involves lots and lots of Dagno manipulation, you basically uh, create, we instantiate a Dagno object and then immediately hash its data to get the hash, even though we already have the hash. Um, and you might not even need to use it. Um, so there's an enormous amount of CPU work that's being done. Uh, we also keep a copy of the, the serialized form of the data, uh, as well as keeping the actual data field itself. So you're basically using twice as much memory as you need to. Um, it's, just, it's just, yeah, it's not good. Uh, it's also the only uh, IPLD format that has an awareness of its own CID. Um, and that kind of is okay when it's a, a multi-hash kind of because that's generated from the content but the CID is like a pointer to some data and an instruction to say interpret this data as this which might not even be the case um, so it's not a good thing to have it David you have a question uh, I have three points so one of them that is important to know uh, especially by this group is uh, historical context so the reason why we had the multi hashes so like the object API is an object like it's an API with it's four years old. Um, it comes from YPFS, um, and it does return the the hash, the multi hash, when when you call it directly to the HTTP API. Uh, re changing that to to now return a CID or even not to return a CID at all, it means it changes the expectation that like the users of YPFS have when they move to JSFFS because we have a client library. There's like just like some some changes uh, in expectations there. And so for a very long time, there was a lot of pushback on like us taking a step forward and like designing the API in a way that like suits better JS needs or suits better the JS flow uh, of calls. Um, but today I totally agree that like we, we should feel confident and comfortable into like improving our APIs for the developers that we know very well and, and like making sure that like IPFS is um, fast and, and it is nice to use. Um, and so that, that's just like a point, an historical context point. The, my other two are, um, I didn't under, like, I understand like the PRs are ready, but I didn't understand like what is the timeline to get them done, to get them merged. Um, and my also, another question I have for you is two weeks ago, uh, you mentioned that uh, NPM on IPFS was about to get in 100 times faster and, and ready for prime time, like ready for the, the team to default to use it. Uh, is it ready? Should we just like start installing all of our modules with NPM on IPFS? Um, it's ready if you have infinite time. Um, but it's still very, very slow to install things. Uh, the thing that was getting lots faster was the ingestion of NPM onto IPFS. Uh, and that has got that has got a lot faster, but it's still very slow. Um, Even if it's cached locally already. Oh sure, yeah. If you if you have your stuff cached locally, then then it's a lot quicker. Um, but it's the case of getting it when you don't have a cache at the moment, which is the first thing that everyone's going to do. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Cool. Uh, so I guess it's up to the user to decide. Yeah, I mean, what so what I've noticed at the moment is that fundamentally everything we're doing is CPU bound which is surprising. I would have thought we would have been network bound, like pulling things down from NPM, pushing them into S3 and all that. But all the, all the Docker containers are just running at 100% CPU, uh, which is why I started looking into CPU profiling and, and, and found this, this problem with the hashing and, and that kind of stuff. So as that goes on, I'm hoping we'll become network bound and not, and not CPU bound. Awesome. The, so on my uh, second point, Slash first question: Do do you have a timeline to get those fixes that you prepared merged? Like, is there? Uh, yeah, I'm well, hoping the next couple of days. Um, so awesome. We got a bunch done today, which is really good. Um, and like, and they're the kind of the painful ones. Um, the the others should just be uh, you know revving depths and that kind of thing. Yeah, so if anyone is actually using NPM on IPFS, if you just like you can use it by just changing your default registry URL, and I've had that set to 
uh, JS, uh, registry.js.ipfs.io for like a month now and it's pretty stable. I report issues and they get fixed and uh, it does take longer than regular NPM, but um, I figured I'm dog fooding stuff and I, uh, whilst it's installing, I can do other things so it doesn't matter too much. Um, so I recommend just switching to it anyway, even if it's not super fast. So, um, so Alex can get better feedback and make it faster. Absolutely, no, I agree. Like, do try it. It is, it is there. It is working. And um, there's also the IPFS NPM uh, module that gives you a, an extra command line binary that just uh, basically proxies for it automatically, so you don't have to change your NPM config. I'll stick a link in the chat for that. Okay, um, so let's move on really quickly because we are running out of time already. Uh, Volker, would you like to share with us your update? So um, I finally pushed out the GraphSync spec that I was working on. It's called GraphSync C because we have an A and a B spec, which we are currently discussing also on the C issue. Um, then finally there will be today, later on, like in 45 minutes, there will be a IPLD B-weekly call for the first time. Um, and yeah, I set that one up. And then JS I probably learned about get many now, which is needed for the DHT work, and fix a bunch of IPLD Ethereum stuff, and started a discussion about IPLD compression, which is interesting for people interested in the, in compression stuff. And next is still on graph sync and probably some IPLD format stuff like reviewing the APIs or yeah, also like the the DAG PP stuff also is kind of like yeah. Sometimes I need to watch or review and stuff like this. So I will also spend time on this. That's all. Any questions for Volker quickly? I'm muted. <laughs> Next on the list is me. Um, Okay, so last week I spent a whole bunch of time doing IPFS road mapping. Thank you everyone for being on that call for ever as it felt at the time uh, but it was it was really useful and it gave me a lot of material to work with to to build up that roadmap document um, and I'm reasonably happy with it um, so that's that's cool that's very cool um, other stuff that I did that week um, so ha, ha, we had a bunch of issues come in about um, IPFS in the browser and adding stuff and the preload requests to our preload nodes being uh, being shot down by cause uh, problems and uh, general availability problems as well. Uh, and so I was looking at it, I was uh, actually uploading my video uh, of presenting the IPFS roadmap to JS IPFS uh, with the debug on for preloading and I realized that uh, actually the preloader was doing, it was doing way too much preload preload requests so actually my node and possibly other nodes in the whole world were uh, asking the preload nodes for way more than they should have done so I quickly uh, became very scared and did a pull request and fixed that up and released it as soon as I could um, so I did that uh, and then whilst Volker was talking I realized that um, I did a, send a pull request to him for loading an IPLD format lazily so in IPLD you can uh, you can now pass a property to the uh, sorry an option called load format to the um, to the constructor and it will asynchronous it will allow you to asynchronously load IPLD formats and uh, return them and what what that does is it is called by IPLD if it doesn't have a codec that it already supports. So uh, if it if it doesn't have what um, what you've what you've asked to, if you've done like an IPLD get, it will say uh, like it will ask load format if you've provided it to uh, as an option, uh, and if you didn't provide it as an option, then it would just error. So it's kind of um, it's kind of like the reverse, the other way around of sort of you're not really providing the modules, you're being, you're providing them when you're asked for them, you're not upfront providing them. So it's kind of flips it on its head, which is kind of, I thought was kind of fun. Uh, but it allows us to make that, um, to re-enable that, uh, that performance thing where uh, the, we would like the CLI takes 
like a second to start up because just because of the weight of the number of requires that it has to do and IPLD formats uh, took uh, about, I think it was between 200 and 400 milliseconds of that or something. So uh, it, it should make it faster again. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, cool. Um, uh, and then, yeah, like I said, I released the chair subject for 3.1. Um, I'm currently not blocked on anything at the moment, but I have a lot of reviews and merges to do. I want to do the, this week I want to get done the uh, files API changes that David was working on. Uh, they are getting closer. I've been working on them today. I want to also do the object API changes that Alex is, has been talking about. Um, and the IPNS routing stuff that uh, Vashko uh, sent uh, a little while ago. Uh, and so last week I did actually find some time to work on CID based stuff. I actually rebased the branch and I ident identified what I actually need to do to get it, get it all wrapped up um, for, for just adding that option, not the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to ideally spend some time this week uh, working on that. So. That's me. Uh, any questions? Cool. Um, who's next? Fashko. Uh, hello. Uh, so last week I worked uh, mainly uh, with, in the DHT side. Uh, so I was blocked last week uh, uh, about the stress tests for uh, the DHT, so I implemented the CLI and HTTP routes for JSIPFS. Uh, yeah, with uh, that implementation, I found uh, some other issues with the DHT. So I have uh, the PRs for the CLI and HTTP routes for JSIPFS, as well as multiple other fixes and improvements in uh, CAD DHT, Libertree Record, Libertree, JSIPFS API, and Interface IPFS Core. Uh, and uh, besides that, I worked in the in that PR for the APNS routing logic, because as the APNS pub sub is blocked, for me to uh, move forward with APNS over DHT, I needed to decouple that part from the pub sub PR. So I'm currently blocked uh, in uh, the APNS stuff because of uh, this PR that Alan will uh, review this week. And uh, about the IPNS over PubSub interop, I would like if uh, you have time to check uh, the interop PR and uh, provide your opinion about uh, the topic encoding that uh, we should use for the IPNS over PubSub thing. So this week uh, I will uh, work in the stress tests and testbed for DHT since now I can, uh, at least using my local PR, start working on it. And I will start the IPNS over the HD as well. Any questions or comments for me? Uh, I just want to comment. Uh, it might be a good time. Uh, it might be a good time to ping the dynamic data working group because they've been wanting like IPNS over PubSub for like a year now. And, and so they, they will be like a big users of that feature so they can start testing it um, as soon as possible and give you feedback if it works well for them. Yeah, I, I noticed um, uh, that it, it was uh, kind of red in our site, but it had an uh, internal problem uh, last week, but I can, uh, tell them that they can start trying it if they want to. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Uh, shall we move on? Uh, who is next? Hugo. Can we have your update, please? Uh, yes. Hi, guys. <coughs> so last week I didn't do much work because I was out on the web summit in Lisbon. But I still managed to do some of the roadmap discussions. Um, also, did a, a little bit of research about the bundle size OKR, um, kind of building up a roadmap how to approach all of it because it's kind of spread out uh, all over the place with the, all the repos and the. the dependencies, uh, version dependencies, synchronization and stuff like that. It's, it's a bit complicated. Uh, 
I started doing some reducing on the sun, on bundle size on CTL, uh, but I need the, the other one, the um, 308 pull request to be merged before I, I <coughs> can finish the request uh, about the bundle size. And uh, on this uh, 308, uh, it's kind of crazy because <laughs> what I was afraid uh, actually happened. This, this is a podcast about uh, enabling the non-disposable uh, version of the CTL to work properly. And I thought that it was uh, basically done, but then David uh, noticed that the browser test didn't run. Uh, and when I started looking into it, um, everything started to fall apart because of the options and the handling is kind of different everywhere. It's a complete mess. So now I'm trying to normalize everything between the three versions, like the in-process, the daemon, and the, uh, the other one, the client. Uh, so that's been taking a while, but I'll probably finish this week or tomorrow. And I'll next the, the rest of the week I'll be enabling the or fixing the Karma test uh, experimental version that I have on AG because it's with the current ones a mess. The watch uh, uh, the argument doesn't work properly. Uh, I can't really uh, do any debugging properly on the on the browser. Uh, and I'll continue the bundle size um, stuff and the city also for this week. Anyone has any questions about my stuff? <coughs> no. Okay. Thank you. David? Um, th thanks for checking on the IPFS DCDL stuff. Uh, it, it might be, yeah, like it, it might be good to it's again like one of those modules that exists for such a long time that like the way that like the options are being processed, although like you got a huge revamp like at the end of last year, um, then the options are still like being parsed thinking that like this is a Go IPFS thing rather than like an IPFS thing. And, and so it might be better to like follow the pattern of just IPFS, which is uh, options trumps config, but then everything else is config, and, and, and that's it. And like, not have special options for IPFS DCDL, don't have special options for Go, don't have special options for JS. It's all like options or config, and, and, and that's it. I think like when, when we did that refactor on just IPFS and just IPFS here, because there was also like a, a try like mix and match and like see see what worked. Uh, things got way better as well. Um, so yeah, re really consider like starting from a blank blank. Uh, slate in, in, in designing what would be the, the best. Of course, without breaking uh, the expectation that like, hey, just if has a bunch of options and users are used to this complete thing, but like, everything else should be uh, refactored out. Yeah, uh, that's exactly, exactly what I'm doing. I started with a daemon version. I simplified a lot of, the, at least of the spawn method. Um, and I thought that was enough for this pull request because I didn't want to like build up the pull request with lots of uh, changes, but it's, it's unavoidable now. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I will I will normalize everything. And it will be much better. Cool. Uh, thank you, Hugo. Thank you, everyone, for your updates. Uh, we have four minutes left. Uh, there's a few lurkers, including a new Neoform, Duda, who I know about. Uh, but uh, would anyone else like to ask any questions or say anything who is here who hasn't uh, explicitly given their update? Please raise your hand or type in the chat. Okay, and any other news? Do you want, we can talk amongst ourselves if we like. David. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to bring up the same thing I, I did on the IPFS alliance. Hey, I uh, score your key results, uh, not only for the sake of scoring, but actually check in, like, like see uh, the things that you've been spending time for the last three to four weeks and, and compare it to the things that you have planned for and, and see if they 
they match. If they don't match, then there is the question, should you like continue focus on these things? Uh, for example, um, Hugo, not necessarily picking on you, but like picking as a good example. Uh, if I open the OKR spreadsheet, perhaps like the IP press DCPL doesn't, doesn't come as top priority, but like you could easily spend like a day or two just like solving all of that madness. And so perhaps like there, there are other important things that like you should like tackle first um, and, and like defer that and, and that's fine. And then like the way to signal that is just like put the label on the pull request or the issue saying this is, this is P2 medium or not as high as this key results. And like, I, I'm going to defer this till I have time. Uh, and that conversation is important to have. Um, then, then another thing I wanted to ask, especially given that Michael, Portia, and Terry are here, I know that like, there, there's a lot of work uh, on Proto School, um, but I also know that like Michael uh, had a very concrete idea of like revamping the, all the APIs for Proto School. So right now I'm not sure if the async iterators endeavor revamp is kind of like blocking in any way, like a like a nice relaunch of first school, or if it all falls into the timeline that you had planned? No, no. Um, I mean, if anything, just like there are some dock improvements that'll probably land that would help. But um, at the end of the day, like the f the user facing APIs of IPFS still like have promises, and we're using those. Um, and we don't have anything using async iterators in any of the current ones. The big thing that we were waiting to land was just the, um, the IPLD seaboard change so that it, it took and, and received CIDs. That was the big one that's going to change everything. Um, there's no other API stuff that we're waiting on or blocked on for protocol. Awesome. Thank you. That, that's good to know. Cool. Uh, Ron, Alex, do you want to say hi? I see I, Alex perhaps is having trouble with Wi-Fi. Ron, do you want to say hi? Yep. Hello, everyone. Um, um, yeah, I just, I just, hello. Yeah, I started working on the IPFS, actually, um, IPFS, uh, really today, officially. Um, so just getting my feet wet in it and, yeah, just going through the tutorials right now. So that's it. Awesome. Um, do shout if you need anything. Um, so, okay, if we're all done, then the only other thing to say is that I see the other, there are other notes on the crypt pad, which are that Volker is out of office on Friday. I'm not around on Thursday. Um, but if we're all done, we're all done and we can go off and lead our lives uh, again. <laughs> He's gone already. Right. Um, well, okay, it's been really nice to see all your faces again, um, your beautiful, beautiful faces. And I will see them again next week. I can't wait. Uh, good night and goodbye. Yeah. Right. Hey, David, do you want to stick around? <laughs> <laughs>